Since I recommended Tight Bond 2 in my Glue Basics video, a lot of you wanted to know my opinion on Tight Bond 3. Well, here's a scene I cut out of that video. I do not, however, recommend Tight Bond 3. I don't have a lot of experience with Tight Bond 3, but when I used it on my patio table, it left horrible stains on the glue joint. I've never had this problem with Tight Bond 2, and it works fine in outdoor projects. When I was writing my script for that episode, I mentioned that Tight Bond 2 is water resistant and Tight Bond 3 is waterproof, which I took to mean that it can be submerged. But when I look on the label, they both have the exact same waterproof logo. I have outdoor projects held together with Tight Bond 2 that have been subjected to years of sun, heat, and rain. Honestly, I have no idea what the benefit of Tight Bond 3 is. I'm sure one of you will tell me, and I'm sure there are specific uses for it, things that Tight Bond 2 can't do, but for me, it's like comparing Godfather 2 to Godfather 3. I don't recommend using a damp cloth or a sponge because the watered down glue on the sponge tends to spread to more of the wood and you can't see it until you go to apply a stain or a finish and then it shows up as ugly spots. To me, it just comes down to convenience and I find that a damp rag creates more problems than it solves. But I also think I'm in the minority on this issue. The Pilot Penguin and others recommended filling nail holes using the method of mixing glue with the sawdust from the wood that you're using. I use this trick sometimes, but again, I've never been able to get a perfect match when applying stain or finish. I think it's because even though the hole is filled with the same color of sawdust, the glue holding it together wants to repel stain. I think it's worth experimenting though, maybe trying out different types of glue, but seriously, getting an exact match is very difficult without mixing custom dyes and having an excellent eye for color matching. I use Tight Bond too. I use so much of it that I buy a gallon at a time. I like to write the date on the bottle when I buy a new one to see how long it lasts. Usually a bottle lasts me about a year, year and a half. One of the most common questions is whether you should apply glue to both surfaces or just one. I see no benefit to applying it to both surfaces. Usually it just results in excess glue squeezing out. I've heard some people say that if you clamp too tightly you can squeeze out too much glue and starve the joint. I have never seen this happen and I don't believe this is possible. I think this is more of a woodworking myth. In my experience, the worst thing that can happen by tightening the clamps too much is leaving dents in the wood. When you place your boards together, they might want to slide around a little bit. What I like to do is just kind of slide the pieces back and forth until they kind of grab. An old trick some people like to use is to sprinkle salt on the glue, which helps prevent the boards from sliding around. I've never tried that. I assume it works, but really that sliding around has never been a major problem for me. It comes with a red lid that goes over this part, but I lost it and I found that it never really did much to prevent the glue from drying up in the tip. Like any glue bottle, the tip gets clogged with dry glue and I need to dig it out and over time this wears out the tip and I have to buy a new one. Another problem is that the seal on this lid eventually wears out and loses its air tightness, so I end up having to just buy a new bottle. I don't have to replace this that often, but frankly it might be better just to use an old mustard bottle or a squeeze bottle you might be able to pick up at the dollar store. A lot of you had suggestions for your favorite adhesives. I think this is a topic worth exploring in a future video, at least a discussion of the specialty adhesives I use in my shop and why. For now, let me quickly address three. Polyurethane glue. A while back, Gorilla Glue was introduced and a lot of people got really excited about it. I tried it a few times and learned that it's not really something I want to mess with, mostly because it's messy and it's very fussy. First, you have to moisten both wood surfaces before applying the glue, usually spraying it with a mister. Then, it, when you put the glue on, it foams up out of the joint like a, like a baking soda volcano science experiment. I think its main advantage is gluing boards together that might not fit together perfectly if there's a gap 
gap between the boards, that foam will fill it up, something wood glue can't do. Construction adhesive. I kind of think the brand name alone, Liquid Nails, is enough to convince people to buy construction adhesive. Construction adhesives are best used for carpentry and construction work, say for building a stud wall and attaching it to a concrete floor. I used it for hanging the beadboard in my bathroom makeover, for instance. I don't recommend it for more precise woodworking projects and building projects because the caulking-like bead is pretty thick and I don't think the pieces will fit together as well. Cyanoacrylate glue. I see a lot of people using super glue in their woodworking, but I've never been able to hold wood together with it. I think there's a special kind that uses two parts. You, you put the glue on and then you spray it with an activator. I, I haven't tried that, but it seems to work. Also, I'm not convinced that super glue is very strong, even on non-porous materials. It just seems brittle somehow. But I, I think super glue is probably best for holding pieces together temporarily. 